Ladies and gentlemen, our first guests today are two amazing educators. They are here at ISTE doing some fantastic presentations, one of which did an amazing Ignite session yesterday that everybody here in the Bloggers Cafe was up on their feet screaming and going, hoo, hoo, hoo. She's one of my favorite Canadians slash new Floridian. And the other one is, is an amazing educator from this co uh, the country. Good morning, everybody, of California. Want to introduce to the t to the show the Edu Slam girls, Miss Holly Clark and Tanya Avareth. How are how are you guys today? Oh, we're doing well. We're so <laughs> we're, we're so excited to be here. And uh, what do you think of ISTE so far? I have to say it's my first ISTE. It's your first yes. ISTE, yes, and you jumped in with all these presentations. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> oh my! This is goodness. my shocked face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I kind of pushed her. Yeah, I, I have to say thank you to Holly because I don't think I would have done it without her. Holly Clark, edu pusher. <laughs> edu pusher. Hashtag edu pusher. <laughs> Excellent. Just want to make sure we're doing a mic check. So um, tell us a little bit about yourselves. So, Tanya, you, you've got some pretty new things going on here. Um, I do, actually. You're, 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 you're actually fleeing an, an entire country. I am. I leave on Saturday from uh, Montreal. I pack my kids in my car with my husband and my dog, and we are driving from Montreal to Florida. I'm, I'm coming to the... I'm coming to America. I'm so excited. That's awesome. Yeah, it's South Florida. Here I come. You're, you're yeah. leaving the land of free health care. What are you doing this for? Oh, my. Well, there's there, nothing comes for free, Jeffrey. That, that's right. right. <laughs> nothing comes for free. And, and uh, I'm excited because I'll be starting up with EdTech Teacher, uh, joining Holly on the team. Um, so I'm really excited to be uh, the Southeast rep for EdTech Teacher starting in three weeks. So That's um, amazing. Yes, I'm very excited. Cool. Cool. And Holly, you are, uh, you're in California. I am. I'm in San Diego. And right now I'm just traveling around presenting and helping people with their one-to-one -one Chromebook implement implementations and iPads. And it's my first year out of the classroom. For sure I will go back because that's where my heart is. But I'm enjoying seeing what, how people are doing educational technology all over the world. Nice. It's really good. And, and what are you noticing are some of the trends going on these days? Trends are Chromebooks. Chromebooks are everywhere right now, yeah. <laughs> and um, and people are starting to understand that, that it's about making thinking visible, and it's not about using the device. So um, some people aren't, but uh, we're trying to help them do that. When you say making thinking visible, mm -hmm. uh, I mean I'm looking right next to you here. That that that's, that are these the types of projects that kids are doing these days, Holly? Uh, we're hoping that they do. Yeah. <laughs> we're hoping that they do projects that give us insight into what they're thinking and understanding in the class and not doing projects that just answer questions that have been predetermined for 15 years. And we also want them to be able to demonstrate their learning, being able to see where they're going with their learning mm -hmm. before it gets too late, <laughs> before they have uh, all the difficulties. So that's a big part of, of what we're really pushing them to do. And, and one of these ways is just to come up with an idea, right? Something that we can just grab onto and go. And you've come up with a way to help educators learn about these, and you call it EduSlam. It's our, we call it, it's our, it's our, it's our child. It's our love child. Um, EduSlam came um, came to us one night when we were talking about how we just wanted to be able to share all the amazing things that people in our network were doing like people like Jenny Magira, Carolyn Skiba, Jason Markey like just we these are people that we went to the Google you. Teacher Academy with yeah <laughs> Jeff uh, I mean we we wanted to be able to say like we knew all these great people who were doing these amazing things and we were like oh my god if we could just share that out like little small tidbits that people were doing and and we sat down one day and we're like we should do a show where we just interview our like a lot of them were our friends at the, the start and we we're like and just share those little slams and then we were like oh my god oh my god it's an edu slam those little slams are those edu slams and so that's where it came from and it it it, it was really just a desire to to like share the most amazing practices with just people not in our network but el elsewhere make it accessible so that's where we it came just from. wanted to start a revolution one edu slam at a time like nice. help people become innovative. So what, what is an example of an edu slam? It's a f show that takes about five minutes where an educator shares out one of their best practices, something they're doing that's shaking up the classroom, being a disruptive innovator at their school. 
and uh, they take about five minutes to share this lesson and we're hoping that teachers can use it in their classroom tomorrow. Walker, you're a little disruptive. Uh, oh, have you yeah, been yeah, slammed yeah. yet? <laughs> I, I haven't, but that's mostly But he's been invited. I've been invited. <laughs> but my agent is a very poor coordinator. And, and, and so are our agents sometimes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but, he, but he will be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's I got, I'm going to be the Tony Gwynn one. of the Edu Slam. <laughs> we, we, Sorry, that's a SoCal thing. The, the who? Tony Gwynn. Oh, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> too, too soon. Oh, yeah, right. Too Never mind. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> way too soon on that one. I'm... I'm disruptive in education right there is Boom. about all I can say for that. So where can we find information about EduSlam? So you can check us out at eduslam.me eduslam.me and, uh, Edu <laughs> and uh, you can follow us at eduslam and you can connect with us as well. Uh, we're always looking for innovators. People are doing really great things and we're, we're hoping maybe you'll come on our show. <laughs> Absolutely. So please check them out. EduSlam, it's a great show. Um I, I, I love the episode that you guys did with that puppet. Oh. Ooh, Ooh Waka. Not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Save that until... Uncomfortable silence. <laughs> Crickets, yo. Uh, anyway, um, you know, one of the things that you guys love to do is do these big presentations. Tell us a little bit about your Ignite session yesterday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> two days ago, right? Two days, two days ago, ago, yeah. Um, I gave an Ignite two days ago on rebranding digital citizenship. Um, basically, the importance of getting our teachers and schools to realize that digital citizenship is no longer just about acceptable use of technology and teaching our students how to use technology politely and thinking that we can give them a little vaccination of um, digital citizenship by having them go to like one presentation a year or teaching a lesson out of a website where they stamp a digital passport and now they're digital citizens. I want people to realize that the only way that we're going to teach our students how to be citizens of a connected world is by getting them to actually use the technology like in the classroom tweet, blog, you know, blocking social media from our classes and thinking that we're protecting our kids is not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. So I'm very passionate about this message. We need to get the kids in our schools actually using the tools that we are learning with. They can't learn how to use social media if they're not actually using social media. How do we start that though? Because there's so many teachers out there that are looking to learn how to do this, but they're not quite sure how to get that first foot in the water. Well, what I say to schools is include your students in the process of coming up with the guidelines for how it is appropriate to use the technology. It's not brain science. Like, it's not rocket science or brain science. <laughs> it isn't, though. I mean, if you want your kids to know how to use social media and you want them to be responsible for it, get them to take ownership of the guidelines that are going to govern how they use it and then get them to actually use it. And you know what? If they make mistakes on there, if they're doing things that happen, so what? That's where we learn. Like, we're going to teach them how to do it in a safe place, yes, but we're also going to teach them um, that they have to actually be on there to understand how to use it in a safe place. Because going home and using it and doing it without our guidance is obviously not working because we're still seeing lots of issues. What, what are some of the issues that are still popping up? Well, I mean, you hear these incidences of cyberbullying. I hate that. I want to vomit when I hear that word because it's so overused. Yeah, guys, no kidding. People are going to be mean to each other online. Nobody, there's no one watching it. There's none of your teachers on there. There's no parents that are actually using it necessarily properly. So, yeah, it's going to happen. Things are going to go wrong. So if we were actually taking the mystery out of that and going on it, then maybe we would have less issues. So you're, you're, you're saying that we should be including students in this whole process. So that means that the students should be worrying about or working on creating the rules and the consequences? Absolutely. That's what I did at my district. It, we saw the biggest results. I, I can't even tell you. Our schools are one to one in many different incidents, like in, in different uses of technology. We have Chromebooks and iPads and MacBooks, and we have Wi Fi. Everyone, everything is completely unblocked. And that's because we took initiative with digital citizenship and made it part of our curriculum and our teaching. And we also had the kids creating their acceptable use guidelines the moment that they came into the schools. I mean, what are what are we looking for as an acceptable use guidelines? Give me some of the things that a school district can look at and get started with? Okay, well, first of all, when we're asking our, our kids to create access, acceptable use guidelines, we're going to set it up so that they're, we're asking them the questions. We're not telling them what we want to see. So you ask them what they think. You give them that kind of autonomy to make those decisions, and um, they 
things like, well, you know, should you use social media in class? When is it appropriate to use social media in class? Let them come up with those rules. Let them come up with those guidelines. So this whole concept of crowdsourcing, is this just something that you're using for the social media aspect or is this something that we would welcome kids to come in and actually do curricular work with? Oh, oh my God, I would love it <laughs> to be part of curricular work. I mean, if they if they if they could be part of that decision making, I mean, that's what it should look like. What do you want to learn about? You know, like what kind of projects do you want to do? Holly, talk to us a little bit about some of the great stuff you're seeing happening in California. Well, I wanted to. There's um, great stuff happening for sure in California, but I have an ignite today that kind of um, follows up on what she's saying, and I wanted to talk for a second about that because I'm going to be talking about how we could use online portfolios, and I'm going to offer up a different name because I hate the term e-portfolio. 1995 called. They yes. want their name back. Because the E stands for electronic, and how boring is that? I mean, that doesn't say what we can do with these things. What electronic, or sorry, not electronic, but what portfolios allow us to do is gather really rich information about students and their learning and their growth and we can actually use them to find out information about each individual student and I kind of picture them becoming the antidote to modernized modern day standardized tests. Well, what in your mind is a portfolio? Is it a so, website? Is it a journal? Is it a live binder? What What is... Today, June 2014, it's a website. I don't think it's a blog because then blogs take things to the, they're kind of chronological and I think that can be hard for a kid who's had work on on this for since they were in kindergarten. But I see it as a website that becomes a visible thinking portfolio where we can visibly, <laughs> the music is awfully. <laughs> we're, we're, we're starting the keynote here so there's speakers all over the place. Yeah, so uh, where they can, um, make their thinking visible to the not only their teacher but to the world and so they gain this larger audience because we know that it's published work that creates critical thinkers and it's when people share their work online and people challenge and reshape what they're thinking they get an audience outside of the echo chamber that we now call classrooms so i think that portfolios are like this answer for public education that people are not taking seriously enough and they need to do it on a website for now. I'm sure that's going to change. Also, I think what digital portfolios help do is also uh, create a, a digital presence and identity. And I mean, Holly and I are really, uh, I mean, this is really important for us. Um, we, we, we really want them to have a digital legacy that they're going to leave behind. So like, it is important that they actually have really positive content that they're showing online so that they have this like their name is their brand they we want our kids to actually have work attached to their name so that when we google them when they apply for a job because that will be their resume like that's it <laughs> because right now everything they're doing is getting indexed by google whether they like it or not so they need to learn how to manipulate that and make it something important rather than letting some kids say something about them that comes up in Google right now. So should we be having classes here at ISTE to help... Um, should we be having classes here at ISTE to teach teachers how to use Facebook correctly so that way they can then teach well, their students how to use it? So George Kuro says this best. If you're not an online, if you're not online, you're becoming illiterate. And so if you're not a connected learner, you can't teach kids to be a connected learner. And being on Facebook is being a connected socializer. You have to be a connected learner. So if you're still Googling lesson plans for civil war, you're not a connected learner. You need to be able to have information come to you in hot channels. And and like when I first started teaching, I could stay one textbook uh, chapter ahead. Well, now that textbook is the world. And so I have to be a connected learner in order to be a connected educator. And in, in 2014 here, what are your definitions of a textbook? Is it a EPUB? Is it a PDF? W, 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 I mean, like, just the Internet. Yeah. It, and it can, if it's an EPUB, it's created by the student. Or maybe it's created by a teacher, but at differentiated levels. I mean, like, the power is so amazing. So I first got a one-to-one -one classroom in the year 2000, and I thought to myself, oh, my God, everything's going to change. I can't believe this. This is going to revolutionize everything. And it's 2014, 
and some people getting Chromebooks. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, like where is it? People are getting Chromebooks and what they're doing is oh, no. having kids take notes. No, no, no. Well, I've do... seen it worse. They take in pictures of their screen, of their worksheets and put it on the Chromebook. I mean, that's when like technology go. That's where like technology like makes it even worse. Like, oh, here's our worksheet. I can now put it and send it out electronically. I mean that. I mean no. <laughs> like, so it sounds like digital portfolios is a great way to have kind of a proactive approach to digital citizenship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody nice. gets it. Somebody gets it. I like this. I like the, this the other that thing my new that I really like is this idea that by involving kids in the process, they might be able to think, hey, this digital citizenship isn't for just when I'm at school. Exactly. exactly. Hello. Exactly. <laughs> and also, Waka speaks the truth. Also, That's besides that, it's just good pedagogy. It's just good pedagogy. Like, we're going to get our kids to create something, then we're going to get them to reflect on it, then we're going to get them to publish to, it, to publish it, and then we're going to get really amazing feedback on our work. Wait a second. Then I could take that work. I can now do something more with it because I've got this rich feedback. I'm going to republish it, and it becomes a process of learning as opposed to I do something and it's the final product and I'm getting a grade. Well, and the kids want to revise it because their audience wants more information. They're like, oh, let me fix that. And the teachers are like, but I thought I had to make you revise. Right. Exactly. And they want to revise. It's like Rushton Hurley says, if they do it for the teacher, they want it to be good enough. But if they do it for the world, they want it to be great. That's right. Yeah. And then, I mean, then why do we even need standardized tests? Oh, my God, I just said it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God, wait, wait, wait. We said it. <laughs> why would we even need that at that point if we have that rich data? I mean, as Holly talks about. So my Ignite's about. Yeah, yeah. If we have that antidote to standardized tests. And for those it's out there who are in the live audience, uh, when is your Ignite session one more time? 4 p.m. today in the Murphy Ballroom. And trust me, because I've heard it, you do not want to miss it. <laughs> nice. You do not want to miss it. She's going to tear the house down. Walker, let me bring you in here for a second here. Sure, you, sure. You, you've you been running around the Bloggers Cafe here doing some pretty interesting stuff here. And I noticed that these two wonderful ladies have some uh, friends of yours in oh, front yeah, of them. Oh, yeah, these are some of my friends. They're uh, part of the Edu Puppets crew. <laughs> the Edu Puppets crew. You're 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 making minions of your own here. Well, you know, handmade swag, right? It's it's a maker's movement. We are we are making teachers. We are making friends. How how do these work? Uh, it's a paper bag puppet. You just kind of flap the top. Thank you, Walker. Yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, Tanya, what's your puppet's name? Jenny. Jenny. How you doing, Jenny? Jenny's good. Excellent. Oh wait, I'm supposed I'm supposed to say I'm Jenny. <laughs> oh wait, no. Hi, I'm good. <laughs> Very good. Good job, Holly. What's your puppet's if name? She's Jenny. I'm Old Man McGuire. Oh, Old Her Man McGuire. <laughs> Shout out Jenny McGuire. What up? <laughs> so Shout Walker, out. what are some of the things? If you were gonna, if if we were gonna ask Holly to bring the puppet up during the the the, the ignite session, <laughs> what are some of the tips and, tr and tricks that she can use for using these puppets? Well, you know, you use the puppets to kind of capture people's attention, to kind of in, put a little bit of levity in the situation, to keep them involved, and also just to demonstrate passionate engagement. Nice. Because if you're willing to stand up and say it with a puppet on your hand, you must really mean it. Portfolios. <laughs> digital citizenship is not about digital citizenship. Enough with the digital. It's finished. It's old. Goodbye. It's Teach digital citizenship, citizenship in authenticity. Values. <laughs> what else can we say? I don't Stop know. making kids work alone. Let them collaborate. Group work is not collaboration. What else can I say? I think I think we need a yen puppet. <laughs> oh, we definitely need a yen oh, puppet. Oh, we should have. Do we have another? Oh one? yeah, I take mine back. Can, can we, Mine's can, Craig Yen. Can, boom, Craig Yen puppet right there. <laughs> Craig Yen. Hey, Craig. Thank you so much for being the one person that watches our show consistently. Thank you. Nice. Craig is our passionate, engaged audience. Living the dream, Craig. So Craig needs his own show. Every student needs to be Craig Yen, right? Yes. Oh, oh there's a hashtag right there. <laughs> All, everyone is Craig. Is that the hashtag? All students Craig Yen? Bosom Yen? I, uh. <laughs> We're going to have, a, we should have a campaign show for Craig. Craig, what was it? What did you call it? Yen Can Chat. Yes, Yen Can Yen. Chat. Coming soon to teachercast.net. <laughs> Guys, I want to say thank you so much for coming here and, 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 you know, for inspiring everybody. Look at the audience that has come here this morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're just here for us. Oh this God. is a great audience right here. Um, where can we find out more information about the great stuff you guys are doing? 
Oh, oh my gosh. Um, well, you can um, c- catch us at eduslam.me. You can also catch uh, um, us at uh, the ETT Summit um, in, Chicago. in Chicago. Actually, I won't unfortunately be there because of my big move. Uh, but but that's July 28th through 30th. We're going to be at the um, together at uh, Miami Device. Woohoo, Miami Bye. Device! <laughs> Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, and that's November. I, it's like the 6th or 7th. You can look that up at MiamiDevice.org. It's, it's got a killer lineup. Kevin Honeycutt's going to be there. We'll be together at iPad Summit Boston in November. And Again at, in San Diego. iPad Summit yeah, February. in February. And also they just announced iPad Summit April in, in Toronto, Canada. So nice. we're coming to Canada. So we're very excited to bring come back Don't home. you know. They, they want you back. Oh, I'm happy that they'll let me over the border. <laughs> very, <laughs> to the very, great very white cool. North. I don't know. Do you remember those people? Those, those people? Those Canadian people that made fun on Saturday Night Live. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, yes, yeah, yes, who, yes. Who was, anyway. So. Anyway. Anyway. Very, very good. Tanya and Holly, everybody, the Eduslam podcast. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very, very thank nice, you. guys. Thank you. thank you for having us. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. We have a great audience here. We are live at the Bloggers Cafe from ISTE 2014. The keynote is happening. I see Jerry Blumengarten over there giving a big high five. Jerry, how are you today? How are things? Where's the cape? <laughs> very, very, very cool. Cosplay at Tech Karaoke tonight. Everybody come dressed as a superhero. We are going to take a quick break to reset the stage with our word from our sponsor. <laughs> 